Has your anxious kid been in therapy a long time and not getting better? Well, it might be OCD. Hi, I'm Dr. Roseanne, and I'm a mental health trailblazer. Join me as we have real conversations about real solutions to kids' problems. And today we're talking about, is it OCD or anxiety? In order to help your kid deal with their worries, and you know what? It's something that not a lot of people are talking about, but they should. So let's dive in. Welcome to my series about Obsessive compulsive disorder. I love to talk about OCD because people just don't know about it. Um, and in my last episode, we talked about what is OCD. And you should go back and listen or watch if you haven't, because I'm really on a mission to change mental health, but I'm really on a mission to educate people about OCD. Um, and my own story was that um, I have been working with kids and families for 30 years, the privilege of that. Um, I can't believe what an absolute shit show mental health is today. And I didn't think it would be, but it is. Um, I thought we would be using all the stuff about neuroscience to make things better and uh, certainly make things less hard for parents. And that's why I'm here teaching you about solutions because we've got to talk about solutions. The science shows us exactly what's there. But my journey with OCD is that it really was, I take tough cases, people fly in all over the world. And it really was one of these clinical issues that I was like, oh man, somebody's coming in with OCD. Oh, and I don't look at any problem like that. I literally am like, this is great. We only have nowhere to go but up. That's what I always tell my clients when they're like, this has got to be the worst case you've ever seen. I'm like, no, it's not. And even if it was, I wouldn't tell you that because that's horrible. Um, so many parents come to me and tell me that their provider told them that it was like the worst case they ever had. I'm like, hello, you're scarring people. Don't do that. But with OCD, why did I have that feeling? It was because I knew there was a strong chance they weren't going to get better. And I always have said that I had better success with people with heroin addiction than I did um, with OCD before I started doing exposure and response prevention. Um, and what happened was I, ha I had a young man with OCD in pants. And this was, I don't know how many years ago, at least 15 years ago. And he thought he had a hole in his neck. And he had these intrusive thoughts that he had a hole in his neck. And no matter what I did, it, he just could not. So I would do a little neurofeedback with him and calm him down. And he, boom, the hole was there. We would try to have, you know, um, do cognitive behavioral nothing. This kid was hijacked with fear and um, he had to have, you know, needed reassurance for us to tell him, what do we do? There's no hole in your neck. There's no hole in your neck. Worst thing you could do. Okay. So I, along with my parents were accommodating these behaviors. And when we answer questions, we write reinforcement to their irrational fears. It actually feeds, feeds the OCD. Okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it. You're probably freaking out that you're damaging your kids. You, you kind of are, but I got the solution for you. And exposure and response prevention um, helps you to, you know, get through that. Talk a lot about it in my book. It's going to be okay. Um, and I would encourage you to get that if you haven't. Um, and there's lots of solutions that we can talk about from neurofeedback to PMF. I'm going to have a supplement line come out just for OCD because people need it. Um, so when it comes to understanding, is this anxiety? Is this OCD? This is where it's often missed. Okay. So OCD often starts with a nexus of anxiety, which anxiety has a real worry. And OCD is often and typically a completely irrational worry that makes no sense. Okay. Like I had somebody that like their OCD was garbage. Like if they saw garbage, if they saw a sewage cover, they would have all these mental rituals that would completely stop them in their tracks. Actually, the person was completely not functional. We got her functional and live in her life as a young adult, but um, made no sense. Doesn't have to have any reality. <laughs> Where did it develop from? 
who knows, but that's what got stuck in her brain. So OCD, a little bit of a, a, a basis, a, could be a minor basis of reality, but generally is completely irrational and anxiety is a basis of reality. So um, I'm afraid of dogs because I got bit by a dog. And then we have all these fears and phobias around it. Okay, you get it. OCD, I'm going to kill my family with knives. You haven't killed your family with knives. There's no reality. It doesn't make any sense. You've never been exposed. These are true stories. These are things that people experience. And what happens is this fear gets eclipsed and they believe that everything they do, the, the thoughts, the actions, right? So the rituals, the obsessions are all in an effort to avoid um, something bad from happening. There's a fear that if they don't complete it, they don't complete the thought, they don't complete the ritual, something bad will happen. So with anxiety, it's more about worries about things, right? So I, you, yes, you can still have a brain that is looping and, and not um, turning off, but it, it can be very real. Like I'm worried if people aren't going to like me, right? Um, because you've had some struggles, but with OCD, it could be like, well, that person is talking about me and um, they don't like me and it doesn't make any sense. And you've never had a problem or you've never had an interaction. There's just so many nuances to it. And so what happens is people seek therapy because on the outside, particularly for kids, you might have worried questions or you might be pulling back um, and be afraid of trying new things. There, there's so many ways that it actually shows up for people um, that it's similar on the outside to anxiety. But a therapist who isn't trained in OCD doesn't know how to really ask about those questions and pull. And, you know, kids are afraid to share what their obsessions are because they're often very dark um, and scary. And, you know, instead they'll say things like, I don't want to talk about it because they're afraid, right? And usually when I suspect it, I was like, oh, so tell me about like, you know, the scary, you know, thoughts, like, or what do you, you know, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. And they're like, oh my God, Dr. Rowe. Like, and I also really align with them on thoughts and uncomfortable sensations and we ignore feelings because there's no place with OCD. It's got to be in the end. The way it works is body sensations, thought then feelings okay when you try to talk to a kid through feelings when their brain is eclipsed it is a waste of time and they're just going to push further from you so the distinguisher between ocd and anxiety is anxiety is worry thoughts they tend to be around real things they still are clinical and get in the way of daily functioning ocd irrational thoughts um uh, intrusive thoughts and compulsions with rituals um, that are fearful in nature and that if I don't do X, something bad will happen to me. Um, they are both internalizing behaviors. You are not often privy to what is really going on. And that's part of why it's hard to diagnose. Um, and what you want to look for is things like gastrointestinal th symptoms, you know, hair pulling, um, difficulty sleeping, um, changes in behaviors, avoidance, a unwillingness to try new things, a asking for reassuring questions um, and getting you to participate in rituals, which they can be very sneaky about. Um, those are some of the signs that we want to look for. And if you are unsure and you see either anxiety or OCD, I would encourage you to seek help from a licensed mental health professional for OCD. You want to go to iocdf.org or you can apply to work with us at drrosanne.com forward slash apply. But whatever you do, make sure you seek help because OCD and anxiety can be very treatment resistant and there's no need for that. You just need help.